you're listening to Books with Brooks. Uh, it is the month of March in the year 2021, and this month we are reading The Boy from the Woods by Harlan Coben. And I started it this week. I am really enjoying it. No spoilers, but uh, I think it's going to be a good one. So be sure to pick that book up if you're going to read along with us this month. Today, we have a very special guest here with us to discuss uh, her business, Momo's Book Club. And it is my friend, Mo Phillips Spots. Hi, Mo. Hello. Hello. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for being here. I know you are slammed and busy with many orders and this like incredible business that you've built. Um, Momo's Book Club is a curated book club that is for children and it delivers books that are as diverse as the world that we live in. Momo's Book Club has been featured everywhere from Cosmo to Good Housekeeping to The Pioneer Woman. Uh, it's been all over the place. It's highly recommended. Um, you can find it at momosbookclub.com or on Instagram at momosbookclub, and that's Momo, M-O-M-O-S. I'm thrilled to have you here. Mo and I actually know each other from the improv world in Chicago. Um, we've performed together at the Comedy Sports Theater, um, which, Mo, you're still a part of, I believe, and still performing. Yeah, I'm on their ensemble now. Very so, yeah. cool. Congratulations. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Well, tell us about Momo's Book Club. Uh, well, first, killer intro. I feel like, I'm like, wow, mm, is that me? You're so uh, <laughs> Yeah, so uh, Momo's Book Club is, is a subscription book club for kids. So we pick out themes because we're focusing on, like, diversity and inclusion. So uh, we send out books about, like, strong, fierce female characters, ethnically diverse characters, like, racially diverse characters, I should say. Um uh, yeah, different topics, just that I, you know, I came from a childcare background, and so I wasn't seeing these books on shelves, and I'm like, there's got to be more out there than what I'm seeing, yeah. so, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. great, and how long ago did you start it? So I started, it f oh, five years ago now, long? it'll be five years in uh, August 2016, yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. So have you seen an uptick in business with the pandemic, and people are, like, at home reading, and they want things to be delivered to their houses? Uh, yeah, I saw um, an uptick actually after the protest this summer, um, mm. which is not surprising. Uh, yeah. But I remember I people were posting on Facebook like, here are like 10 books that should be on your kids' bookshelves, but they're all like about the civil rights movement. And, like, yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I was like, okay. Uh, <laughs> so I wrote this long post where I was like, this is not what diversity should be like those books are great and they definitely have a place but like if we're trying to create an inclusive bookshelf and create you know uh empathy and and um really have these conversations about like you know other people who don't look like us then we need to see more books with them just like living normal lives and like yeah playing in snow and wearing green pants and you know <laughs> all these different things um and then it kind of like took off from there so that's awesome yeah so why I mean at what age should kids start like reading Momo's book club books oh man so we have uh board books now so like literally birth uh <laughs> you could start uh my friend is a pediatrician I was talking to her yesterday yesterday about this actually and she was saying like they promote literacy from like from the jump so you can literally start as soon as you're you know you're ready to crack open a book, you can start reading and uh, enjoy our club. That's great. So do you have, I assume you've got customers like all over the country. Is it all over the world or is it US only? Uh, it's we're, we're all over the world now. In the past, I sent a box or two to Australia. And currently we have a few customers in Canada and one in France. So yeah. Oh, cool. That's really awesome. So how do you, like, how do you choose the books? What's the process? That's a really good question. <laughs> uh, and one I've tried to, I need to like figure out a way to write it down. Um, but I have like themes that I like to touch on. Um, and I kind of like go through book lists and based on the theme. So like if, you know, so this month we're promoting uh, celebrating uniqueness. And so like I went through and I found books that are really great about like building self-confidence and uh expressing who you are and loving who you are and so like I just kind of run through those lists to see if I can find books that like touch on those things so yeah that's amazing I know 
I don't have children myself, but a lot of my friends are starting to have kids. And so I usually buy, I mean, I'm books with Brooks, so I usually try to buy them uh, books for their, you know, to start their bookshelves for their kids. And I do find myself defaulting to books that like I read as a child, which, you know, I think is great. Like it's books that I feel an emotional connection to, but they're certainly not diverse stories. And so Mm -hmm. I think this is a really important thing to talk about, um, especially for, you know, even if you don't have kids, if you're buying presents for kids or you want to help kids like grow their libraries, um, this is something to think about, you know, and, and maybe not something we thought about growing up, or at least me as a white person, my parents as white people. So I think like, it's a great idea. And if you don't know where to start, like a lot of us, like Mama's book club, like just does all the hard work for you. <laughs> That's very true. Yeah. I have to give a shout out to my parents. This is, that's kind of where I got the idea for it is I was a talking to kids and they were often, I like, I babysat a lot and they were like, why is your skin brown? And I was like, Oh, Oh, no one's, no one's talking about this. Uh, (laughs) um, But my parents like growing up, they worked really hard at giving me a diverse library and also books that kind of helped explain the things that that were going on in my life. So like, when my brother was was born or when they were about to have him, there are several books about being a big sibling, mm-hmm. but we're also like diverse. So like as Jack Keats um, is a great example, he has one called Peter's Chair and it's about his mom, like getting ready to have um, his sister and like kind of going through the changes of that. Um, or like my mom was getting her PhD, like she would come home tired. And so we had a book about a mom who came home from work tired as a way to kind of help us explain like, <sighs> Helps understand like what was going on. That's amazing. Yeah, so they they were really good about about doing that for me, and I think because I like I'm black, and so that's was they're very conscious of that of wanting to show books that represented me, and so I had a a variety of books, but I think it's just important to see yourself in books and see your friends in books and see the world in books. So Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. And do you feel like there's been like there's more books by diverse authors about diverse stories is that something that has like increased over time is there still a huge deficit like what's your thought uh yeah there's definitely an uptick in uh diverse stories uh and we're getting some with like uh talking about like neurodiversity too which is super great there are more of those coming out but there's still a vast majority of books uh picture books are about white children and then animals and then it's like black people and then it's everyone mm-hmm. else so like mm-hmm. there's still a large gap in um these stories so yeah yeah for sure so what is your do you have a favorite book that's in the momos book club collection if so i would love to hear what it is i'm trying to think i think the first one like the first round of books i sent out there's one that's called like uh my name is Isabel and I'm going to be, I'm totally going to butcher that, but basically it's about like, or my name is not Isabel. I think it's the title, but it's about like a little girl who basically is like saying like, Oh, my name's not Isabel. I'm an astronaut and I'm going to go like visit all the stars. It's basically her like living all of these dreams in this like one bedtime routine story with her mother. And it was like, I was like crying reading. I was like, this oh. is so good. Oh. It was like, yeah, it was really, it was really good. I've been touting hair love recently because you know, the movie mm. came out and they mm-hmm. created a picture book. Uh, and my niece has been loving hair love. Like she instantly fell in love. So I was like super excited yeah. to uh, to share that with her. So yeah. yeah. Those are great ones. Do you have a favorite author? <sighs> For uh, kids books? Mm, mm-hmm. Not really. I think like the ones, the one that I love the most is still Ezra Jack Keats. Um, mm-hmm. Cause he's someone I grew up with, but I don't think I have one author right now that I'm like yeah all these books are ones I wanted to include I kind of you know pick from different pockets as it were (laughs) right now so well and tell us kind of how it works so you can choose by age group um how many books do people get like tell us how it all works if you join yeah so currently we offer uh board books for zero to three picture books for like four to eight and then um middle grade novels they're this is why but they're technically middle grade so they're for kids that are like eight to 12 in that range um and so you can sign up to receive one two or three books a month for our board books and picture books and then the YA novel is just one book a month because honestly they're long enough you just one is good um 
Uh, yeah, and then I I pick the themes, I curate book lists, and then I send them out, which is really interesting because I was like, oh, this is the thing that I that, that I do, and I was like, oh, but no one else is doing this. I'm like, okay, great. Um, <laughs> okay, but, great. <laughs> uh, but I'm picking out books that I think are super important, and they're often books that um maybe you wouldn't be looking for, or maybe you don't know where to look for. But I like mm-hmm. this is the theme of the month that we're sending them out, so it's not unlike other subscription boxes that are based on a theme but i'm just doing that theme with books and i just send them out every month so yeah really that's amazing that sounds really fun to pick the books although i will say i don't know i feel a lot of pressure and obviously like my book club is a lot smaller than your massive business but (laughs) even that like i'm like every time i pick a book i'm like oh man this is scary like what if everyone hates it (laughs) yeah that is often uh (laughs) <laughs> something I, I worry about because like last month I sent out Baby Young Gifted in Black for Black History Month because it's it's a really great book that has different kind of like uh, entrepreneurs and artists and politicians like who we should all look up to like all year round and I was like I don't know this is a risk like not everyone in my you know customer base is is black but I, yeah. I thought it was super important to yeah. I think like you know representation is not only seeing yourself in books but also like putting those people on your bookshelves as well mm-hmm. so Definitely. I thought it was super important so yeah and was the reception positive mostly it was oh. mostly positive yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had a couple books who were like mm, why and I was like this is why um yeah, yeah. so mm-hmm. it's a weird thing but I think it's it's really important so I'm I'm sticking to it so for sure and are you a reader personally Oh no, I, I hate books. You hate them. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> um, yes, I am also a a reader of novels, not just word books. So yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. What's your what do you have a genre? Um, I really like fantasy. That's Ooh. like my bread and butter. Um, I'm trying to get more into nonfiction these days, but I really like fantasy is like my my top genre. Have you read we just read the um A Court of Missed in wait what was it Sarah J Moss series we started it in book club A Court of Thorns and Roses have you read that one No I haven't <laughs> it's, it's a, a cool fantasy title. it's like an elf fairy fantasy we Oh read nice it in January yeah we read it in January um it, cool. it got mixed reviews I mean not you know <laughs> fantasy isn't for everyone <laughs> It's it's not I think you have to I don't know. There's a lot of imagination involved because uh, yes. you have to like recreate worlds in your yes. brain. So yeah, Total, I get like, that. Extreme world building. Yeah. Uh-huh. And, and yeah. it was the first book in a five book series. And so it was a lot of like laying the groundwork and like building the world. And so yeah. people were like exhausted by that, which I totally understand. Um, yeah, I'm yeah. actually listening to the second one in the series right now on audiobook, which is pretty funny. Um, right. I'm trying to continue that. But what uh, do you have a favorite fantasy book? to share with us um let's see I am a big fan I'm trying to think of the ones that I I feel like my fantasy reading has evolved um but the one that I love and I need to finish um is called the green writer it's a green writer series by Kristen Britton oh, it's a green um, writer. okay yeah I started it in in a high school no middle school um and she has slowly been churning out the book so I thought it was gonna be a trilogy and then she put out like a a fourth book and then a fifth book came out that I have not read yet oh Um, cool so I have to I have to I keep forgetting to find the one um and then I'm also like a big fan of um Octavia Butler and NK I'm reading uh, my first NK Jemsen novel right now my The Killing Moon oh I haven't read that one yeah it's part of a trilogy I believe um my friend Rachel likes to send me books <laughs> which I love but also I'm like reading let me count one two three four five books right now uh <laughs> yeah I'm sure. for different reasons and I just kind of start them and then I don't always finish them and so I'm like oh no <laughs> yeah I know when people might know my I like keep my to be read on my nightstand and it's Last night, it's the tower fell, and I was like, "All right, this is uh, yes, a." I have the same problem. You <laughs> know. Mm. Well, does does having? I mean, does working with books? So here's I have a fantasy of working in the publishing industry. I think it would be really fun. It sounds like so great to me as someone who loves books, but I'm also like, 
would I end up resenting it and like not reading as much for pleasure? Have you found that to be true working in, in books? No, I haven't. Um, <laughs> I'm so glad to hear that. Um, yeah, I also think work in publishing would be super cool. Um, but no, I wish I had like more time to read, honestly. Um, yeah. I wish that like, because I do like other things, like I teach, you know, improv and other stuff. So I wish I just had time to like sit in my, you know, the library I also would have in this home in this life and just like of kind course. of read all day. Um, yes. Yeah, no, I still, I love books. I love finding new books. I, you know, I love buying and pretending I'm going to read them, but really just, they're just going to sit on my nightstand. I love, mm-hmm. yeah, I still, I still love them. I think probably love them more than I did when I started. So coming up after the break, we'll hear more from Mo on how to choose diverse books for your kids' libraries. Want to hear more about your favorite TV shows and movies that are on countless streaming services? Then listen to Up Next with your new favorite hosts, me, Kristen Aviles. And me, Christina Walter. Every other week, we'll highlight one genre, but two movies or TV shows, one old and one new. We'll let you know what's hot and what's not from your favorite or least favorite streaming services. And be sure to stay tuned to the end of each episode where we shout out an artist whose name you should know for their talent in the industry. So follow us to stay up to date with your favorite hosts from Up Next, a part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Have you found the pandemic to impact like how you're choosing books? Are you still going to bookstores? I guess both per- both personally, but also for Momo's Book Club. Like, are you just doing it all online, and does that impact how you do it? Yeah, I was doing it mostly online before, but now that like I have more customers than I did before, that I'm kind of I'm doing more like legwork on my own. So I have access to like publishers' catalogs, and I spend a lot of yeah. time. Mm-hmm. digging through theirs um to look for new books that are coming out and that are out now yeah. so i i think my research has gotten better uh yeah <laughs> in the pandemic i've had more time um i definitely had more time to put into this which is great it's something that i loved always loved doing but because i was like running around doing everything else i didn't always have the time to put into it so now okay. i have a lot more time and so like I get to research more and, and look through more lists and see what's coming out and see what's new and and now and get more ideas for other you know boxes or themes that I want to work with so um yeah it's it's good can you give us can you give us a preview of what some themes are going to be coming up um yeah so this month we're doing uniqueness um next month that. um is like our activism box but I'm going to f- focus on um like the earth and uh, green energy and conservation. So I'm looking into like those kind of things because it's, you know, Arbor Day is in, is in April. So looking at that. Um, And then, you know, yeah. And then I have like little ideas for other boxes that I want to put together in the future. Like um, I think at Christmas time, I want to put together like a box that has a book for everyone. So like has like an adult novel, a Y novel, like a picture book and a board book that's all in the same theme and like oh, cool. sell that for Christmas. Yeah. Cause folks are like, are you, are you going to do adult novels? And I'm like, I, I honestly don't, just don't have the time right now what? to read <laughs> yeah. on adult novels. But okay. um, I think for Christmas, I'm going to make an effort to kind of put that together and make that a, a special thing for the whole family to enjoy. So <sighs> yeah. I love that idea. Yeah. That's fantastic. What advice do you have for new parents who want to raise a little reader um, and want to like, you know, start building a library that is representative of, you know, the world? Mm-hmm. I mean, definitely join Momo's book club. Oh, right. Um, yes. <laughs> advice. <I'm wrong. laughs> um, let's see. How do I look? I tend to, um, I mean, I think about the books that you had as a kid. Um, maybe they're not all diverse, but they're a good place to start. So, like, a lot of folks had um, Corduroy, which is a good way to start. Um, oh, Corduroy! Yes. Yeah, that's a classic. Um, Snowy Day is a classic. Like, feel like I would mind those childhood classics and like look at those as a you know a place to jump off from. Um, I mean, that's what I did. I picked ones that. Like the the one book kind of inspired one for me was the Paperback Princess, um, which is a favorite that I had as a kid mm-hmm. about 
the princess who rescues herself and the prince in the end. And I, I love that idea. And I kind oh. of use that to like look for other books in that same uh, purview. So yeah, mm-hmm. um, that's what I would start. I would start doing that. I mean, sign up with me, of course, Jeff. And then just like, yeah. you know, look, cause you know, there are some good ones from our childhood that are great. There are some that are very not great and not relevant and um, probably not something I don't want to cancel them per se. It's like, it's good to know what we did so we don't do it again. Um, right. But um, definitely look at your childhood books and see the ones that you liked and the, you know, if they share the same stories and values that you want to impart to the kids in your life. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, on that note, I read a story yesterday that they are like stopping printing a few Dr. Seuss books. Mm-hmm. Have you seen that? Because they're oh, like, yeah. not appropriate in today's modern society. Yeah, they're stopping printing of six books because uh, I think the word it was a, the wording of it was interesting. Like they're hurtful to like communities. So basically, he has always had tones of like anti-Semitism and anti. Uh, I think it was like anti-Asian in his books. Mm-hmm. Um, so the ones they're pulling are ones that like are very much in that tone yeah. um which is good um i'm glad i mean i'm mad that it took this long but yeah it's good that they're pulling those mm-hmm. um those at least six copies yeah i think there are some others that are also still kind of not great uh but they're pulling for sure those the, those six copies yeah, so that's good. good and what do you what are your thoughts on disney stories like we're talking about the um you know the princess who saves herself and the prince and i do feel like you know, children's movies and media have moved in that direction, but obviously, like the classics, do not tell that tale. That is not the yeah, world. yeah. Um, there are a few Disney movies that my family we watched once and then never again. Uh, like my yeah. parents are like, "All right, we've seen this. We're not going to watch it again." Yeah. Um, I feel like Peter Pan was definitely that. Um, and then Dumbo was also that. I feel like Pocahontas was also in that same vein. Um. Yeah. I know that Disney started adding disclaimers at the the top of those movies. Um, yeah, for the ones that are super, they're never releasing "Song of the South" again. I heard they're like that's just like they're it's, it's gone. gone. Yeah, but they're like they added disclaimers on Disney Plus about uh like some of the racially insensitive stuff that's in them, which is great because I again like I. I don't feel like we should cancel something altogether because we need to look like the only way we can move forward is by learning what we've done in the past. Yeah. And if we're just saying, Oh, we're not going to talk about it. We're not going to talk about it. Just then pretend it we're, didn't happen and never existed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think that's how we kind of got here. The first is like, you know, parents were like, if we don't talk about race, then we don't have to like, then we're, you know, we're not acknowledging that it's an issue, but it, it's actually the opposite because kids are super aware so you have to have these conversations and I think by having them then you can like make them more open empathetic and understanding like what not to do so Mm. yeah yeah that's That's my take on it (laughs) I love it what is your I mean what's your goal like what's your dream like take over the world plan for Momo's book club (laughs) um I think ideally I would love to have a like bookstore and cafe oh um and with all the books in the club and then also still do the subscription box for folks who aren't able to get to the physical location but definitely like have a physical space for folks to come and visit and peruse books and we'll have story time with different people and you know all that good stuff but kind of a community community bookstore um but yeah that's the ultimate goal I love that idea. Also, I just miss going to bookstores so much Mm -hmm. and I miss sitting in coffee shops so much and I can't wait to do it again soon, hopefully. (sighs) Yeah. That's the dream. That's the dream. Oh, man. Well, is there anything else about Momo's Book Club that I didn't ask you that you want our listeners to know? I don't think so. You're very thorough. It's very good. Uh (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Uh, No, I think that's, I think that's, it okay well yeah. we're we're so impressed with everything that you're accomplishing and it's it's really important and um you're ch- really changing the world and changing a lot of kids outlooks and um you know views on really important issues like racism and sexism and um uniqueness i love that so much and i do think you know 
as an avid reader myself, like what you read as a kid does inform the way that you look at the world and the way that you think about things. And it's really important to get um, a lot of different viewpoints in there when you're really young and your brain is all spongy. Um, yeah. You know, so just congratulations. And I, and, and, you know, books with Brooks is here to help you however we can. Um, and I hope that all of our listeners will check out Momo's book club uh, on their website, momosbookclub.com or on Instagram, Momo's book club, which again is M O M O S. And a huge thank you, Mo, for being here today and taking time, precious time out of your book packing and book picking. <laughs> I know you're busy, so thank you so much. Thank you for having me. This has been a delight. Cool. <laughs> and as always, happy reading. Books with Brooks is produced by Mo Barrow with theme music by Jonathan Allen. Books with Brooks is part of the Press Play Podcast Network, which empowers hosts to create high-quality professional shows that inspire and entertain. If you've been dreaming of hosting your own podcast, we can help. Just email us at content at pressplaypodcast.com to get started today.